What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. It's your boy Nicholas here, big dogs. Gotta eat fantasy football. Whether you're joining us from YouTube, whether you're joining us from the podcast, just know I got tons of love for you. It's Monday. We're getting in the muck. In the muck Mondays. This is gonna be my new Monday thing. My new Monday ting. Here's what we're doing. We're gonna take two players, maybe three players, depending on how I'm feeling that day. A lot of energy. We might take the trifecta. We're gonna go with two today, though. What we're gonna do is compare two players that are somewhat controversial in fantasy football. Might be teammates, might be trying to dissect the backfield, or it might be two guys whose ADPs are are very close to each other. And I'm gonna break down both of their situations, who I like better, why, where I would draft them, all that kind of stuff. So that's gonna be my Monday thing. That's the schedule from now on, right? Monday's gonna be in the muck, controversial. Wednesday's gonna be a random video. Fridays are gonna be mock drafts. Saturdays are my vlogs. Sundays, I'm gonna be live streaming. So thank you to anyone who joined the live stream yesterday. That was dope. That was a lot of fun. I do the live streams on YouTube. I'll probably do them on YouTube and Instagram once it's in the season. Make sure you hit the little bell right underneath this video right here. So that will let you know when I do live streams. And I'll probably do them between 1 and 2 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday mornings, afternoons, depending on how much you drank. You don't know what part of the day it even is anymore. So today we're going to talk about Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. Running backs for the Green Bay Packers. And guys, as much as I'm going to be throwing stuff at you, I want to hear your opinions as well on the the two players. Which one you like, why, where you're comfortable drafting them. Today we're doing Jamal Williams versus Aaron Jones in the Muck Monday. Let's mother fudging get it. Before we get into the analysis, I am giving away a year subscription to Pro Football Focus, their edge package, to one of you guys. Their edge package, I think that might be the only paid package I personally use during the fantasy football season. It's really cool. They have all the player grades, stats, uh, wide receiver, cornerback matchups are in there and stuff like that. Very, very, very useful tool, especially for DFS. I'm going to buy one of you guys a year subscription to it. All you need to do is subscribe to my podcast, give it a five-star rating and a review. Once you do that, I see all the reviews. So once you do that, you're automatically entered. If you've already done that, then you're automatically entered as well. The podcast is BDGE Fantasy Football. So just search that in the in the iTunes. It's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on all, it's, I don't know, Stitcher, all, all the platforms. The links will be down below in the description as well. Head to the podcast, leave it a review, leave it a rating, and you will be entered and I'll pick that within the next week or so. Your subscription to PFF Edge, I'm gonna buy one of you guys that. So we're gonna start this off by just looking at the overview. Here are the stats of Jamal and Aaron Jones from 2017. Just their overall rushing numbers, their receiving numbers, their fantasy ranks. So I'll give you guys a second to kind of look that over and check it out. Looking at their ADPs, they're getting drafted so close to each other. Jamal Williams, pick 88, Aaron Jones, pick 92. When you average out their draft and MFL 10 ADPs, they're both going RB 37. So which one do you want? I wanted to grab research from a bunch of sources, right? My boy Graham Barfield, of course, Pro Football Focus, and then kind of do my own analysis. But I want to throw some stats out here to show you the bigger picture, what last year was for them too. It was realistically efficiency versus volume. It was Aaron Jones versus Jamal Williams. Efficiency, volume. Graham Barfield. Aaron Jones is 5.5. 5.5 five, five yards per carry on first and second downs was second in the NFL only behind Alvin Kamara. Jamal Williams, 3.8 yards per carry on first and second downs. 44% of Aaron Jones's carries went for five plus yards. Let that sink in for a second. 44% of his carries went for five plus yards. Jamal Williams, 32% went for five plus yards. The NFL average is 32%. So Jamal Williams wasn't terrible, but Aaron Jones was very good. And think about what that says. So he had a small sample size, of course, right? And that's going to be something that turns off people in, for Aaron Jones. I think he had 81 carries on the year and his, and his yards per carry was like five point, above 5.5. So when you have a small sample size, like 81 carries, you, there's a good chance that a few runs skewed that yards per carry number. However, when you see that 44% of his carries went for five plus yards, that tells you that he was consistently getting chunk yards. It was like Alex Collins last year who had a very high yards per carry, but he wasn't breaking away 30, 40, 50 yard runs, right? He was just doing it consistently. Uh, carry in, carry out, hitting the holes, five yards, six yards, seven yards, eight yards, 12 yards, whatever. That's what that says. If 44% of your carries went from five plus yards, that does, that means that you're not just breaking off big runs and skewing your efficiency. So that's a really big positive for me when it comes to Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones forced at least one missed tackle on 16% of his attempts. Jamal Williams, 11.8%. The NFL average is 14 and a half. Aaron Jones was 17th best in the NFL in that. 
Jamal Williams, 16th worst. Now, Aaron Jones, his yards per carry overall, not just on first and second downs, running backs with at least 75 carries on the year, second, again, in the NFL, only behind Kamara. Williams, 39th of 52 qualified running backs, 3.63 yards per carry. Now we're talking about Yak. So Aaron Jones is obviously a smaller back, got a smaller back, but a higher Yak. You know what I'm saying? His Yak, 2.9, compares pretty well to Williams's 2.3. Now, when you look at the size, actually, you don't have their size numbers up here right now. Let me pull them up for you. So Aaron Jones, 5'9", 210. Jamal Williams, six foot two thirteen. So you're looking at guy uh, Aaron Jones who is smaller. Actually, not that much smaller in terms of weight. So you know the smaller build might help him because he's bigger in terms of his, I guess like his BMI because he's shorter. But you know you you think of Williams as a much bigger back, and you think of a guy uh, who is a bigger back who usually would excel in yards after contact. But Jones was at two point nine, which was eleventh ranked of fifty two running backs. Williams was forty first ranked. When I go into the rest of the stats from Pro Football Focus, Graham Barfield, Player Profiler, basically just tells you Aaron Jones was very very good at creating yards on his own is very very good at making guys miss and very good at being a good runner and it tells you that Jamal Williams just was not that's the easy analysis so what does that say so why would the Packers be like okay let's just not use Aaron Jones all the time few different factors at play here the biggest one that I see is third downs mainly the receiving game and the pass blocking game Jamal Williams out caught him I think it was, let me look at the stats again it was 25 to 9 and had 262 receiving yards and two touchdowns to Jones's 22 receiving yards and zero touchdowns Jones was almost not even used in, in the in the receiving game while Jamal Williams was a big part of that while he was like kind of the workhorse down the stretch so the receiving game this is not to say that Aaron Jones is not capable of it because he is a very very good athlete coming out of UTEP also another reason why most people probably didn't know him because UTEP's a small school of course he was a fifth round pick not very hyped up coming into the pros However, like I said, he's a very good athlete. Um, over his, his last three seasons at UTEP, he averaged over two and a half receptions a game. He had over 630 receiving yards, and he scored through the air seven times. He was a guy who had over 2,000 scrimmage yards and 20 total touchdowns in his senior year at UTEP. So he was a guy that produced heavily while he was in college. Like I'm saying, he's very, very capable of being a good receiving back. They just didn't use him in that sense. What's interesting to me is although Jamal Williams produced way more in the receiving game. I was looking at pro football focuses just receiving grades outright, and I'm not really sure how they grade or rank players on their receiving grade. It has nothing to do with stats. I think they individually look at like every play and they grade you on that. But Aaron Jones actually graded out as a better receiving running back than Jamal Williams, despite having much less in the statistical categories. You could say it's fluky and those are stupid grades, but when you look at the top 10 guys, the top 10 graded running backs in terms of receiving running backs. I mean, they've got a pretty solid list here, so I feel like they might be onto something here. So uh, having Aaron Jones ranked above Jamal Williams might say something to you. I don't, I'm not saying that they're going to use him this year at Green Bay on, on third downs to catch the ball, but I'm just saying he's very, very capable of it. So don't just look at the stats and write him off as someone who can't catch the ball. But the bigger piece, the bigger picture here, I think, is third downs in terms of pass blocking. This is where Jamal Williams absolutely excelled. He was the fourth highest graded pass blocking running back in the NFL last year as a rookie, the fourth highest. You think about their situation, everything revolves around Aaron Rodgers. Him coming back from this broken collarbone, their number one priority is going to be to protect Aaron Rodgers. So you have Jamal Williams, who's an amazing pass blocker. That's all you need to say to know that he's getting playtime. Aaron Jones ranked like very, very low in terms of pass blocking for running back. So that's where he excels. It, you know, he proved that he can catch the ball on third downs. He proved that he could block on third downs. So I kind of think going into the season, you have to assume that Jamal Williams is their third down back. And that kind of takes away a big piece of the pie for Aaron Jones. Silly me, I almost forgot to thank the sponsors of today's video, the makers of this beautiful, beautiful fantasy belt. Fantasy Jocks. Dot com. Link in the description. Go check them out, please. They are the industry leader. You're about to see how ghetto we got this set up. Yes, I have a Powerade Zero bottle holding these this bad boy up, but it needs it needs to be held up because this thing is sturdy as hell. This is great, great quality. I'm telling you, bro. They are the number one leader in anything your fantasy league needs in terms of championship belts, rings, trophies, draft boards. They have it for fantasy baseball, fantasy football, fantasy basketball. Whatever you need, fantasyjocks.com has you. These things are legit. You can get your team's name scribed into the golden plate over here so you can kind of keep a track record of who wins the chip that's invaluable these things are awesome guys just chip in an extra five bucks an extra ten bucks depending on how big your league is grab yourself one of these bad boys and y'all 
are set forever, forever. Now, me and my big money leave, we've been using this for like three or four years. It's the greatest thing ever. My friend wears it to the mall. My friend wears it to the bar. My friend wears it. I don't even think he's my friend anymore after how annoying he is with this thing, to be honest with you, but it's very cool. I, I really suggest you guys ship. It makes the league that much more fun. Just ship in a few extra bucks on the buy-in and grab yourself one of these from Fantasy Jocks. Com. Uh, yeah, so thank you for sponsoring today's video. Yeah, the other wild card. There's two wild cards here. I would say it's Ty Montgomery probably and uh, just injuries in general. So Ty Mont came into last year with a lot of hype. People thought he was going to be the workhorse. A lot of people were like, eh, no, no way he's going to get hurt. That's exactly what happened. He got hurt, and that opened the door for Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. So my take on Ty Montgomery is I don't have faith in Ty Montgomery having really any impact in the running game for Green Bay this year. If anything, he might trickle into like a a flex role for fantasy purposes as a wide receiver. And this kind of goes back to my point. I'm getting a lot of questions about Randall Cobb. Oh, is he such a steal on the draft? He's going late. I mean, here, here's my thing with Randall Cobb, and I'll talk about this probably throughout the summer a lot, is that's such a, a big training camp battle to keep an eye on because clearly the Packers need to do something different on offense. I don't think they could just literally sit back and rely on Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams to do everything. I think that wide receiver two role, when you look at the statistic, which I put on Instagram last week, Highly suggest you follow me on Instagram. It shows the average wide receiver two finish for a fantasy wide receiver in, in the Packers offense under Aaron Rodgers since he became the starter. That's some pretty serious numbers right there, right? A lot of receptions, almost a thousand yards, eight touchdowns for someone you can get really late in drafts. However, Randall Cobb hasn't been good in a long time. They picked three wide receivers. They're looking to have someone break into that lineup. So I'm not giving it outright to Randall Cobb. He's probably the favorite here, but that's a training camp battle to really, really, really keep an eye on. And it wouldn't surprise me if Ty Montgomery started getting more and more snaps as an actual wide receiver. So that's where I see Ty Mont as a wide receiver, not a running back. But in terms of just injuries overall, right? All three of these guys, Ty Mont, Jones, Williams, suffered injuries last year, which is what you know opened the door for all of them to get touches and opportunity and whatnot. So when you look at Aaron Jones, he missed six games last year. He played all of his senior year in college, but he also was held to just two games during his junior year. So it's definitely a, a concern for him being of a smaller size. But I, I mean, I will say his senior year, he followed that junior, the two, two game junior year up with 257 touches in his senior year, which is tw over 21 a game. So he did prove that he could handle a load. Again, it's against a lesser defense and it's college. So I don't know how much you want to really weigh that. Jamal Williams, he dealt with concussions during his freshman year. Then he had a serious knee injury in 2014, which cut that season short and it forced him to miss all of 2015 at BYU. And then last year he was dealing with another knee injury. So that's two knee injuries that he's been dealing with over the last few years. And knee, injury, knee injuries are obviously something that's not to joke around with when it comes to running backs, right? So both of them definitely have injury concerns here. And it wouldn't be surprising to me or shouldn't be surprising to NAU guys to see either of them miss time on the year. I mean, I don't want to go into the year and assume that they're going to get hurt. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to really predict it. I'm not going to put that into this analysis, but it's just definitely worth noting. So if we're going to assume they're both health healthy, or at least we assume they play the same number of games, which one do you want? I'm definitely leaning towards Aaron Jones, but I don't think he will take over as a workhorse for all the reasons I've said about Jamal Williams playing on third down. A lot of you guys probably like Jamal Williams over Aaron Jones. At least the majority of people do is because they rode Jamal Williams, right? Aaron Jones had some really big games last year when they finally started feeding him the ball. He had a couple games where he was getting 20 plus touches, went over like 125 total yards, looked like, you know, he was going to break out and be an absolute fantasy stud for the rest of the year. Then he got hurt, and I think it was like week 10, which opened week nine or week 10, which opened the door to Jamal Williams, and they absolutely fed him down the stretch. And he was averaging, I think, over like 20 touches a game, getting tons of carries, tons of receptions and stuff. But even in, during that stretch, it was like weeks 10 to 17, he was fantasy's RB8, but he was still averaging like three and a half yards per carry. He was super efficient at that. In my opinion, you know, I mean, it's great that they saw him handle the load, but if they're going to give both of them equal opportunity on carries, I think Aaron Jones's efficiency and his talent will eventually stand out. And like talent usually wins in the long run, right? So if they're if they're both getting the same amount of carries and Aaron Jones is averaging five yards a carry, Jamal Williams is 3.5, they're going to start pushing that workload over to Aaron Jones. Again, though, both of their ceilings are capped because they're both going to be eating away at each other. Jamal Williams will take that third down role pass blocking for for Aaron Rodgers, which is really important. So I think they're gonna split the backfield. And I know this like theory, this storyline of owning the Aaron Rodgers led offense fantasy running back is like a thing. But I, you know, I looked back and historically, you know, it's a lot better in theory than than in actuality for fantasy, just like the tight end position here, man. So check out this chart. I was looking at who finished as the top fantasy running back each year for the Packers while Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback. And you see a couple stud finishes, right? Like Ryan Grant, RB8, Eddie Lacy, 
RB5. And those are the two like big years. But in both of those seasons, those guys dominated their respective backfields. Like Ryan Grant saw over 300 touches in 2009. Lacey was like at 290 touches. So those are guys who are the bell cows in their offense. So if you're going to get 300 touches, you don't need Aaron Rodgers to be your quarterback in order to finish at the top. I would honestly argue that that's kind of not impressive. The fact that Ryan Grant had over 300 touches with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback and only finishes RB8. But that's not, that's not the point here. The point here is that like, unless you're getting a running back that's going to get 300 touches, then having the Aaron Rodgers running back is actually not crazy impressive because they pass the ball so often down in the red zone and near the end zone and things like that. So their touchdown upside, while you, know, you, you love that the opportunity is there because they get there, their play calling doesn't dictate more towards the run. Depending on how big your league is, right? If you're in a 10 team league, then it's a bunch of RB3 finishes or worse. So that's not, you know, nothing crazy. So I would say like, unless you're confident that Jamal Williams or, or Aaron Jones, one of the two is going to be the absolute bell cow there, which it's almost impossible to be at this point. Can't assume that they're going to be anything better than like RB20, RB25. I mean, where they're being picked is very late in the draft. So I'm fine. I'm, what was it? RB37, I think they were. Yeah, I'm fine with like either of them, right? But if I had to choose one, it would be Aaron Jones because I just think that he's a better runner and I think he's capable of catching the ball as well and eventually he'll get some work in the in the pass in the passing game and he'll creepily start getting more more and more of a workload but that being said I got again guys I know you probably came here looking for one answer like one of these guys is going to bust out and be like the RB1 or whatever I don't see it playing out that well but it's just it, you know it's a, it's a battle to keep an eye on during training camp I'd go Aaron Jones personally but if you like Jamal Williams I can't really hate let me know which one of the two that you guys like, why you like them. Again, if you want to win a year subscription to Pro Football Focus Edge Package, hit me up on the podcast on iTunes. Just search BDGE Fantasy Football. Go leave a rating and review, and I'll see your rating and review right there, and I'll announce the winner next week or, or you know 10 days or something like that. So appreciate you sticking around. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Next Monday, we will do another one. I think it's going to be Royce Freeman versus Ronald Jones. So subscribe if you're new to the channel, and that's it. I'll see you all on Wednesday.